Welcome everyone. I would like to give you a quick presentation about my PhD topic entitled Dental Prevention Procedures in Childhood and Children with Special Needs. I'm Dama Tabi. I'm a first year orthodontic resident at the Department of Community Dentistry at Samavas University. I envision as a PhD student that most of the children with disabilities can attend to a specialized preventive program and my mission is to provide them this program. You can see here my two ongoing projects. The first one is assessing the effectiveness of dental prevention programs among children through a systematic review and a meta-analysis. And in the second one, we conducted a pilot study for an RCT with children with special needs. As we all know, bad oral hygiene is a major public health issue, not just in an individual level, but uh, for the government as well, because it's a public health issue as well. And uh, oral health education is an important aspect to improve the children's oral health literacy and in this way their oral hygiene. Uh, the aim of this meta-analysis is to find out if uh, these school-based oral health educations are effective and uh, which way. Our clinical question is that are these school-based prevention programs are effective? So we included studies uh, with children aged 5 to 21, so who were attending school, and uh, they received as an intervention a school-based oral health education with a control group who did not receive uh, this during the follow-up period, and they were measuring the changes in oral health indices, so before the education and after the education. Uh, we ended up 27 uh, eligible articles with the systematic search when we used five domains for get the most of the articles. You can see my first figure. Um, we could not find clinically relevant changes in the DMFT indices. You should know that the DMFT measures uh, the number of teeth uh, which are decayed, missing, or filled. So it can be measured from 0 to 28. And according to the World Health Organization, it should be measured in every five to six years. And unfortunately, uh, none of our studies reached this long follow-up period. So that's why we could not reach a significant difference either. We can see um, one uh, group with a significant difference uh, when a teacher uh, taught the children how to brush their teeth, but uh, in the other groups when a healthcare worker um, taught the children or they used other methods, there were not such, uh, such a change. But uh, our second figure, uh, we were investigating the, ch uh, the changes in the oral hygiene indices, and uh, it can be measured from zero to six, and uh, uh, greater the number, the poorer the person's oral hygiene. And uh, we could reach significant uh, differences and also clinical differences uh, in the groups where a healthcare worker, so like dentists, dental students, dental nurses, or just school nurses, uh, taught the children, and uh, when a teacher taught the children during the education, but we could not reach uh, these uh, differences when they used other methods in this uh, way, uh, when they used short drama acts to educate the children. And uh, in our fifth figure, we try to illustrate the changes in the oral hygiene indices during the time period. And um, this is really important because at the baseline, you can see that we got quite high values. But after the education in the intervention group, we, um, we saw that there was a great reduction in the indices. So the children oral health uh, were better. But after several months, you can see here the six months uh, progress, uh, the children um, forgot almost everything and they got worse oral hygiene like uh, in the baseline. So um, that is our main outcome that uh, the oral health education is effective in short term, but we have to repeat it over and over a year. So, uh, so maintaining a good oral hygiene becomes a habit, not just an act you learn in the first grade, for example. And uh, our other result that the education is effective, yes, but it depends on the method they use. So live speech, for example, when a teacher or uh, 
healthcare worker educated the children were effective, but when they used uh, the short term acts, videos, or they educated the parent, they were not as effective as the live speech. And uh, I already submitted this manuscript uh, to the International Journal of Pediatric Dentistry in the end of November, and it is still under review, so we are hoping uh, for, for a good answer. And my second project is a pilot study for an RCT when we are investigating the effectiveness of a dental <coughs> prevention education program for oral hygiene among children learning in conductive pedagogy. Approximately 7,000 children in Hungary under the age of 19 has some form of uh, movement deficiency in Hungary, and unfortunately, there are no specialized prevention programs for them, and uh, there are no uh, generalized training for the dentist how to treat them. So, unfortunately, they are uh, almost always a lack of knowledge how to treat them, and in this way, they are mostly treated under general anesthesia, and um, it's really hard to find these centers for these children to get treatment, and in this way, they have two times higher uh, on uh, DMFT and uh, higher on med dental need in this group. That's why uh, we were wondering if uh, there is an improvement in their oral health after receiving uh, specialized dental education program. So we included the children at the Petu Andres Institute. We give them this education and uh, we measure their oral health indices like the same, but we include the Franco scale, which uh, was measuring their cooperation during the treatments. We try to include all of the children we could, but uh, the hardest part was to communicate with the parents, so we could include only who returned the consent form signed by their parents or guardians, and we excluded the children who were unable to cooperate the education because of uh, intellectual disabilities. And we measured their oral health uh, indices, and we sent out a questionnaire for the parents. Here I try to illustrate the allocation of the groups. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but uh, with educational studies, um, which are low risk, but with uh, high, uh, high um, uh, I don't know. So you can benefit from this educational part. Uh, you should include all of the children, and it's a circular motion that uh, every uh, group acts as a control first, you can see here with the yellow line, and uh, after acting a control, they became an active uh, group, so in, during the green line, they receive, sorry, they receiving the education for eight weeks, and after it, they have uh, also a control period, or when they just maintaining their oral health based on their experience and their education, and after it, they leave the study and the new control group comes in. Here you can see our preliminary <coughs> results. Uh, this is from the pilot study. Uh, in the pilot study we had two groups. None of them were a control because we couldn't manage it. We just tried to uh, do the educational part. But uh, it was a pleasure that we could see significant changes uh, in the oral hygiene index. So um, there was a great reduction after the eight week. And we could see, yes, that there were an increment uh, at the 16th week, but it was not statistically relevant. Uh, now we are ready with the two pilot group and uh, we try to involve more school and we are writing the protocol for this. Here you can see my two projects. Uh, I already submitted the first one and I would like to submit the results of the pilot study in March. I would like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Teddy Altman from The Grey's Anatomy that you have to go back to the beginning to understand the end. Thank you, Dalma, for the presentation. These are clearly very important topics. I have a question regarding your first topic. So I saw in the first figure there was one outcome that was significant. And it looked like that significance was really driven by one study that was highly significant and highly weighted. Why do you think that study was so significant? Sorry, I have to go back. So, no, I 
Can I go back to the, thank you. Uh, do you mean the DMFT or, or the oral hygiene index? Uh, figure one, so here the Chelapa study, which had a relatively large difference. Yes, I, I know, we checked it and we didn't know. <laughs> uh, we do the risk of bias analysis. I didn't include it because of the lack of time, but um, we had several problems. With the, with the studies and how they show the results, how they do the trials. And um, there is another problem here because uh, in theory, for the DMFT, it, it can decrease because if you have a teeth with decay, it, it, it's a one point. And it's a one point if you get it filled or get it removed. But here with some studies, um, we think that uh, there were a mistake during the recording of this data because uh, sometimes we could see a uh, negative change in the DMFT. So I think that, yes, this is our first outcome because almost every study measured the DMFT, but we saw that in many cases that they were not as precise as should be. Did you also run an analysis excluding those studies that were at, at a high risk of bias? No, because a lot of them uh, had a high risk of bias because the study designs and the randomization. So no, we couldn't exclude almost all of them. I see. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you for your presentation. And I have a question regarding uh, the first project. Do you have any information about if in any of the studies the children's relatives also received a, a, a hygienic uh, education or not? As especially for smaller children, their relatives' oral hygienic habits can highly influ influence their habits as well. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, there was another problem that sometimes they included the parents as well, but we tried to subgroup them. So uh, when the children and the parents were receiving both the education, uh, we excluded the trials so because of the contamination and uh, where only the parents get the education they were in the third group when the other method were used thank you congratulations to your presentation uh, in your first uh, project you mentioned that uh, the uh, education was more effective when uh, uh, you repeated uh, the teaching method. And in your second uh, project in the RCT, are you planning to do it uh, several times? Or in one group, you just plan to do the education one time and then you measure uh, the indexes? Or after like a few months, do you plan to repeat this or not? Thank you for your question. In our second study, um, the education is an eight week long education. So we meet them every week for one an hour because of the revision. And we would like to repeat the education in every year during their uh, time in the Petro Andrash Institute and uh, try to follow them. But not with, again, this eight week program, just the follow up uh, occasions. I have only a comment. Uh, I recognize the the latest, I mean the oldest uh, uh, publication in your plot and uh, uh, in Switzerland about 40, 50 years ago all these things were proved. So I don't really understand and you still have I think one second to answer. So, so what are we talking about? So we do know everything about the effectivity and uh, efficacy of of uh, dental prevention in elementary schools. It was a really, really, really effective national program in Switzerland and, and practically the DMFT index was zero at the 12 years group. 